Ahoy! As you can see, today I'm a wizard. And that's for a good reason, because today we're doing a fire staff guide. And as you can tell, I have a, a more wizardy wizard next to me, and that's Sephir. Because Sephir is actually a fire staff and I think ice gauntlet main, at least a, a wizard main of sorts. And uh, as with these guides, as uh, per usual, I think it's better to have an expert on board, and I think Sephir is the right person to ask about this type of stuff. So today, we're gonna do a little guide with him. Wanna say hi? Yeah, of course. Hey everyone, this is Sephir. I am the more wizardy wizard than Duke Mage <laughs> <laughs> over here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate that. Of course, of course. We're gonna jump right into it here. We're gonna do it similar to the other guides that we've done, but a little bit more spontaneous. Uh, and we're gonna begin with Sephir telling you a little bit about who the Fire Staff is for. Yeah, so the Fire Staff is definitely for a certain type of player. Uh, it rewards a lot of lead skill shots. So if you're good at prediction, you're good at leading shots that aren't necessarily hit scan, you're good at kind of calculating how the battle's gonna go and playing around with mobility, then that might be the build for you for sure. Have you had any experience in other games where you played a similar playstyle that kind of led you back to the fire staff? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I used to play League of Legends, uh, you know, back in the day, and uh, one of my favorite characters was uh, Karthus, and he was kind of a mage, and basically you would uh, set traps and, like, you would have to predict something ahead of time, like a second or so. And so for me, that kind of draws me back to that, like landing some sort of a skill shot, that where you had to kind of predict your opponent's movement, and that really seems to be the mages or the fire staff's playstyle. See, that explains why I don't like the fire staff that much because I'd never like Karthus. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Karthus. <laughs> uh, right. To be fair, nobody likes Karthus. <laughs> so. It's the ultimate. <laughs> yep, it is. All right, moving on to weapons to pair it with. There are two of those, and uh, Sefi will tell you a little bit about the first one. Yeah, so the first one would be Ice Gauntlet. Um, this is just the other mage weapon, right? It's pretty obvious pairing, uh, but it offers a lot of CC utility and additional AOE damage, which goes great with the Fire Staff. Uh, they combo very well together. And the one after that would probably be the Rapier, which is more of a one-on-one -on -one duelist type weapon. Uh, so paired with the Fire Staff, you become a threat at range and you also become a threat in melee range which uh, definitely tricks up some of the melee players. Uh, they don't like that one for sure. Most certainly. Um, the melee or the, the rapier especially has a lot of punish in melee. It can evade attacks, it can repost counter attacks, and it has mobility as well. So it often allows a ranged player, a mage, to create distance again after they've been caught in melee. And especially in combination with the fire staff, which also has some extra mobility, you can often get quite far away after you've been caught already. And then there is a third option, which we don't really talk about. It's the Life Staff. The Life Staff works oh, with basically no. <laughs> every weapon in the game. It's uh, extremely strong and you can use it with an Ember Gem. You can use the Fire Staff with an Ember Gem if you want to. Don't do it. It's, it's, uh, it's frustrating to deal with. But at the moment, we don't know if that's still going to be the case on life to the same degree. But at the moment, it's still an extremely strong combination, as is everything else with the Life Staff. And that brings us to the abilities, which I'm going to demonstrate to you here. The first one is Pillar of Fire, with a 10 second cooldown and dealing 134% weapon damage while costing 15 mana. This skill has a circle targeter, as you can see here. And once you use it, it has a quick channel during which you root it in place. And then the spell will cast and deal damage in that area. As you can see, it's quite a decent amount of damage, so if you can land it, most certainly worth it. The second ability is Meteor Shower, which is a long-lasting AoE with an 18 seconds cooldown. This is a channel and costs 5 mana per second, up to 30 mana. Initially, it deals 34% weapon damage and then an additional 20% over time per second, which you can level up later as well. As you can see, it's in a very large radius here, and once you cast it, you're stuck in this place and you're casting for up to 5 seconds and you have the burning meteors crashing down. The third ability is Fireball. This is a 15 seconds cooldown and deals 140% weapon damage 
but there is a burning field on the ground afterwards that lasts for an additional 6 seconds, dealing 10% weapon damage per second. This costs 25 mana. And as you can see, the projectile itself doesn't look all that crazy, but then you have this burning area afterwards where you deal extra damage to enemies, so you want to try and kite them towards that or make them stand in that if possible. On the right side, on the Pyromancer tree, the first skill is Flamethrower. This ability has an 8 second cooldown and it's a consistent ticking damage each second for 34% weapon damage. And additionally, it puts enemies on fire for additional tick damage afterwards. As you can see, it's very much a flamethrower and you can just keep going with it. It does kind of slow you down very hard though, so it's really not something you would want to use in PvP while an enemy is attacking you and eventually you'll drain your entire mana using it. Maxing out this ability actually entirely removes the cooldown. The second ability is Incinerate. It's an AoE damaging ability for 130% weapon damage that also comes with a knockback effect afterwards and puts enemies on fire. This is what it looks like, it roots you in place for a little bit as well, so you want to make sure that the enemy is close enough that you can actually catch them. The third ability is Burnout, which has a 20 seconds cooldown and it's a dash with 190% weapon damage. This will also apply burn to enemies for additional 10% weapon damage for 8 seconds. As you can see it has a little bit of a wind up where you kind of self rooted before it actually makes you dash. Just to demonstrate that while walking as well, I'm holding my W key and now I actually get rooted in place anyways. Upgrading this ability can increase its range significantly though. Something that Sefi wanted me to highlight as well is the fact that you want to have 200 intelligence to really have effectiveness with the fire staff since then you get the 10 mana after a dodge. You'll get used to a playstyle where you're dodging very often just to restore your mana and this is one of the best ways to regenerate mana especially in earlier stages of the game when you don't fully perked out yet and this is something you can reach in your level 30-ish area so at that point it becomes a lot easier to use this weapon as well. And that brings us to the leveling order and here Sephir will tell you a little bit more. Yeah, so the leveling order is a little rough with Mage. Um, do keep in mind that it is struggle bus to level Mage early, uh, especially when you don't have access to the dodge mana perk from the intelligence bonus, and uh, when you don't have a lot of these mana abilities coming online, because what tends to happen is you just run out of energy, right? You can't even auto attack because even those consume mana. Uh, so for the leveling build, I would say getting spell focus in the left side tree is very important because it will allow you to at least attack for free, right? Like you're going to get the mana back so you can still attack without using an ability. So this will be very important. And from there, you would go down to clear mind because you're trying to get towards this third ability called fireball down here on the left side tree and that will be your main damage dealer move uh, basically you just want to throw the fireball directly at them you want to stand on top of the area where your fireball is so it gets maximum burning value because it does do quite a lot of damage and from that point on you would just head over to the right side tree grab pyromania and then you would grab incinerate which is a fantastic ability uh, and then after that you would grab burnout and at this point you have successfully gained all the skills that you're going to need for the Fire Mage. So this is going to give you mobility, a lot of ways to deal with people in melee range, and just do a ton of damage. And then from that point on, you're looking at really good value passives like the Incinerate Tree, where you just go down and get some of those abilities. Uh, the Burnout Tree, where you go down and get the increased mobility and things of that nature. And then two passives that really stand out on the right side tree is going to be Watch It Burn which just increase your auto attack damage by 20% more or less. And then another skill called Kendall, which is going to just increase everything you do by an additional 20%. And with that, you have your base leveling order. Of course, at the end, you can always play around with the last points, but this is something that should get you going at the start of the game. And at the moment, so many perks may still change anyways, that we don't quite know what things will be like at launch or what actually uh, turns out to be the absolute best and in that regard Sephir will soon be able to help you much further than I can because he's looking to do some in-depth stuff and with the fire staff and with the mage weapons in general so if you're interested in more in-depth things on that then we'll certainly go check out his channel 
uh, which will of course be, be linked down below. And also, thank you, Sephir, for helping with this. Very much appreciate it. Uh, of course, it was my honor. And anytime, man. I always love sitting down and discussing things like this. And, you know, we've been having a blast with all this stuff. So, yeah. I appreciate that. We also have a, a little bit of a PvE run where we tried out some, some different uh, places and how to farm them with AoE. Uh, which may or may not be up at this point. You'll find out uh, if you check Sephir's channel. So if you want to do us uh, have some fun with that and die a little bit, then feel free to go over there. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you for the next one soon. If you're new to the channel, you can of course click subscribe and the bell here as well. And yeah, I've been Duke Sloth. And I've been Sephir. <laughs> <laughs> Duke Sloth, out.